Hello again, magical community and non-magical community. If you decided to show up, you're welcome here too. Today I am doing a flip through of Jim Kay's illustrated version of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone if you live in America like me, although I still prefer Philosopher's Stone. I've been getting these books since they first started coming out. I always get mine at Target, so I'll leave you a link in the description below if you want to shop at Target for some Harry Potter stuff yourself. I am very excited to show this book to you guys. If you haven't seen these illustrations before, Jim K does really, really beautiful illustrations for the Harry Potter series. I actually just read that Jim K was personally chosen by JK Rowling to be the illustrator for the series, which I thought that was so interesting. If this is your first time to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And if I can see the names of my subscribers, I'm not really sure how you changed that setting, but I always check out your channels if I can see who you are. So let that be a little motivation for my fellow content creators. Don't forget to also give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Okay, enough with the world's longest introduction. Let's get started on this book. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right at all, but the Mina Lima illustrations of the book remind me of a comic book and the Jim K illustrations remind me of a painting. So on the first page right inside the binding we have this really pretty all black very dark aesthetic picture of the outside of Hogwarts. It's super super pretty. It's very gothic looking. This is the side of the Great Hall that we're seeing in this picture and it's a very like I don't know why they made it such a depressing looking scene because this is the start of Harry's journey. It's kind of nice at the beginning, but it's very dark and depressing. There's a lot of like just dead trees. There is like a hog that you can see on this on the um like front facing side of the castle. It's super intricate. There's a lot, a lot of little details. Here's the opening page with a toad on a book. Adorable. Then here we have just a quick picture of Harry with a bunch of luggage on his way to Hogwarts but it looks like not his luggage. I don't know whose it is. And we have a quick picture of the sorting hat. We have a quick little dedication with even a really adorable illustration of a, like a dog holding a stuffed bunny. And I think that is such a cute little illustration. I love the table of contents page in this book. It's got all of the like flying keys on it. Well, not all of the flying keys because we don't really know what they look like, but there's a bunch of different flying keys and they're colorful and they're all different. And they're really cool. So here we have Vernon and Petunia and Dudley. I think Dudley looks perfect. If I'm gonna be real honest, I've never even noticed before in my times before of looking through these that it has the Grunnings Drill sign above it. It says, November, boring is our business. I love this little snow globe with the Privet Drive house in it. That is such an adorable thing. It reminds me of Coraline when her parents get trapped in the snow globe. I love how this map looks. I love how this cat looks, super pretty. Moving on. Next we have a very pretty vibrant picture of just a random owl. This is the time when Harry has just defeated Lord Voldemort. All the witches and wizards across the globe are partying and they're having a good time and they're out in the open in regular wizard clothing and robes and things. And they've got owls flying around and they're setting off shooting stars all over the place. So these are these owls, they're just some random owls. Here is a close-up of Hagrid on his motorbike. I think he looks so funny and serious in this picture. I think it's the angle of it. He looks like an actual like motorcycle gang dude or something. And this is when he is bringing Harry to Dumbledore at Privet Drive, obviously. Here on the next page, we see another picture of Hagrid on the motorbike. And this time we see him flying in the sky. And I really like the way this picture looks. I just want it to be that this is the scene where Harry Potter fell asleep over Bristol. We've already reached chapter two, The Vanishing Glass, and on this page we just see a chameleon. This really is like, it doesn't really matter, but it is interesting on this, I think this is supposed to be a mirror or something, but you can see this is actually a snake eating its tail around the outside and a spider, a little bit of a, um, what am I trying to say? A little bit of a premonition of what is to come. This is obviously the chapter where Harry is going to the zoo with his cousin Dudley for his birthday. Here is a very beautiful lovely shot of Harry in his cupboard. It's really messy in here but it's got a lot of things that I feel like Harry might 
use as his own or might play with like some little toys and things here and there i love that it has the different spiders they really did like a lot of detail work with the spiders in this they all look different this one's even got like a whole skeleton top like on its butt that is crazy crazy details in these actually a lot of the spiders have like skeleton faces in their butts and I love how Harry looks in this. He just looks so young and cute and adorable, but he also just looks so dejected and sad. Here is a pile of Dudley's gifts for his birthday. There does not look like there is 37 or 36 or 39 or however they're supposed to be in this picture. This is a funny page. It kind of shows Dudley in comparison with a gorilla and they're both eating something in a similar way and they look at each other in a similar way. I think that's a funny idea. And I also think it's kind of trying to show how dumb and also brutish Dudley is. Next page we see Harry pressing his face and hands up to the glass to look at the boa constrictor in the face. The ability to get like the look of being pressed against the glass and you can see like all the plants like reflected in the glass that are in the enclosure. Here is the boa constrictor after Harry has accidentally let it escape and it is kind of scaring everybody off. And there's a ladder laying right there, which I think is funny because with like the flooring as like the checkerboard pattern, it really looks like shoots and ladders or whatever that game is. What I'm thinking of is SpongeBob's Eels and Escalators. Here is chapter three, the letters from no one. Here we see a letter being clutched in an owl's talons. And over here we see Dudley in his new school uniform to go to smelting. Here is a funny scene where Harry, Dudley, and Vernon are all fighting over one of Harry's letters. Then we have Vernon in his effort to keep the letters from getting to Harry, boarding up the mail slot, the cracks in the doors, all the doors and windows, I believe. And he showed in this illustration that they're somehow still like shoving letters through when they're like coming out of this piece of wood, which I think is so funny. Here's a lovely picture of Vernon rowing the boat across the water to the little cabin in the middle of the ocean on the rock or whatever it's called. And Vernon is looking like an utter psychopath, I think in this, for some reason he like almost appears to be smiling, but I know he shouldn't be. I love the yellow raincoat. I think it's really pretty. I love the like contrast of the blue and the yellow in this picture. And it sort of gives me like the feeling of foreboding of like the doom of where they're headed to this little shack. There's also a nice little seagull over here. Chapter four is the keeper of the keys. Here we see Hagrid's set of keys for Hogwarts grounds. And I love, love this illustration because Hagrid has all these different types of keys and they are so crazy. There's one with what looks like human teeth on it on like some weird green ugly warty stick thing. There's another one that's like silver and has like viney looking things wrapped around it with an H for Hogwarts. We have one that looks like a broomstick and may also represent a snitch on the other end. We have one that looks like a bird's foot. It looks like a bird's foot is the key. It's disgusting. Also, this little troll thing with the giant hair. Don't know why this is here, but I'm pretty sure I had one of these and it was dope. He would have the craziest key collection of all time and here it is, it's crazy. Then on this page, we have Pirate Hagrid. I only say that because he's got these skulls and crossbones on like his, I don't know if it's like a handkerchief or something hanging right here, but it's very pirate-esque. I like that his belt is like a hog's head. And he's also got this little like monkey keychain, cute. He's got some pins on the side over here. Don't know what his pin badges are for, but I'd like to know. You're a wizard, Harry. And that is what this picture illustrates right here. Hagrid's giving him the talk about how he's a wizard and who, where his parents come from and what happened to them and blah, blah, blah. Here is the crumpled up owl that Hagrid takes out of his pocket so that he can write a note to Dumbledore to tell him that he's told Harry everything and that they're gonna be on their way to Diagon Alley tomorrow. I love this illustration that shows the Dursleys cowering under the shadow, just under the mere presence of Hagrid because he's a giant for real. Here is the scene of Hagrid doing a spell on Dudley to turn him into a pig. He doesn't do it correctly. Obviously Hagrid doesn't have much magical abilities considering he got expelled in his third year, I believe, and got his wand snapped in half. So he probably never really learned to do magic very well, I would say. 
but he does manage to give Dudley his little piggy tail, which Dudley has to keep for, I believe, like a month after this until he gets taken to the hospital to get it removed, which I find to be a very interesting plot point in the story that I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about, which is, did the hospital have any questions about how Dudley acquired a pig's tail? Did any magical law enforcement ever have to go and cover that up in any way? I feel like Harry could have gotten in some serious trouble for that. Anyway, the illustration looks super, super cool. The way the magic looks, even coming out of the end of the wand, it's super realistic, like the smoke ring, the fire looking stuff, it's like explosive. And then you can see Dudley over here just getting blown across the room. His, his little crocodile slipper fell off. He is just done. And then here we just see the hut on the rock in the middle of the ocean with the seagulls flying around it with the scary black sky and winds and storming. Jim K sure made this shack look as scary as possible. It really looks like they're gonna like fall into the ocean any second and it doesn't look like a safe place to be in high wind storms for sure. Chapter five is Diagon Alley. And I love the little mice in this illustration. I believe the night before when Hagrid gave Harry his coat to cover up with, he said, be careful if you feel it wriggling a little bit. It's just some of the door mice I still have in the pockets. So, and I think the mice look super, super cute in this illustration. This page is very uplifting. They have left the dark, scary shack in the center of the sea on the rock. And Hagrid is magicking their boat into basically a motorboat and they're speeding across the water to the shore. This scene just seems so happy. Harry gets to be around somebody other than the Dursleys for once. Someone that actually likes him, someone that wants to talk to him. And Harry gets to talk to him as much as he wants. He gets to ask him questions while he's reading the newspaper, all kinds of things that he was never allowed to do with the Dursleys. And this is just the building of Harry's relationship with Hagrid that makes Hagrid one of Harry's best friends for the entire series. Here's Hagrid and Harry sitting next to some random old lady, I believe waiting to get on the train. I don't believe they're on the train yet. I think a cool thing about this illustration is that the lady has a cat and a carrier on the floor next to her and you can see the cat's hand is like reaching out trying to swipe at a mouse that's running by which probably came from Hagrid's pockets. And I also just love that Hagrid is so big that he's pushing Harry and this old lady off of the bench on either side of him and he's so unaware he's just reading his newspaper and doesn't even know. Here we have arrived at the Leaky Cauldron and I really like this picture of the cauldron, like the leaky cauldron sign. I was like an actual cauldron with some water coming out of like a little hole. I like the design of it. It's very like 3D looking. I'm not sure if it's 3D, but it looks 3D from the picture. You can see the alleyway from the leaky cauldron where they came out is on the left. And we have a bunch of different shops in Diagon Alley, like what looks like S Starling. Materia Medica Mullet Grubs. So this is a wig shop. Then we have Briggs Brooms. So it looks like Jim K actually made up some names of some stores, which I think is a really cool idea because I know that there's gotta be way more shops in Diagon Alley than we're seeing. And did I mention how detailed these pictures are? There is a lot of small stuff to look at in these pictures. Honestly, if you really wanna see it all, I recommend buying it for yourself so you can really get all up in there and really just look with a magnifying glass. Then on this next page of Diagon Alley, we have some giant plant store and I can't read what the title is of that place. We have a Blinkhorn the Bootmaker. We have Gallo Glass, Scrying Mirrors, Enchanted Mirrors, Haunted Mirrors. We have what looks to be a fortune telling store. We have a Twinkles Telescopes place for your astronomy needs. We have a children's clothing store. And then here finally on this far side, we have Flourish and Lots, a store that we've actually heard of from Diagon Alley. And next to that, you can see Madame Malkin's Rope Shop. On this page, we see a goblin. I believe this is just a random goblin, the one that's just sitting at the desk when they first walk into Gringotts. I don't think this is a great book. Here we have pointy faced Draco Malfoy looking a little sickly, getting his robes fitted at Madame Malkin's robe shop. This is the first student from Hogwarts that Harry ever talks to and he reminds him of Dudley at once. He does not really like his personality. 
He's kind of a brat. This picture is actually the window display for Ollivander's. It is a single wand laying on a faded purple cushion in the dusty window. Chapter six, the journey from platform nine and three quarters. Harry is finally going to go to Hogwarts, but only after spending another few weeks with the Dursleys at their house. So here's the illustration from the outside cover. As you can see, it looks a, a whole hell of a lot better on the inside of the book because you can see the whole thing at once and it's not like wrapped around or distorted anyway. It's a super pretty illustration of the Hogwarts Express, just like the front of it. It's smoky everywhere, so it kind of fades out in the back. There's a lot of people everywhere. There's owls flying around and there's cats. There's luggage and the Hogwarts Express looks very impressive. Gotta love the details on the train and like the texturing on this front panel here. I don't know if Jim K intended the Hogwarts Express to look like a dragon, but he definitely put like a dragon head up here with like the fire coming out and the smoke. And then it has like the dragon scales going down the top of it, which is a really cute idea. I like it. Here is a lovely picture of Albus Dumbledore. He is eating some sherbet lemons. He's got a little, a little knitwork in front of him. I don't know that Dumbledore does much knitting, but it appears so in this picture. I'm not sure what this plant thing is that he's got next to him, but I am digging it. In fact, I think I've seen a similar plant that exists in real life and not in the wizarding world. Here is Ron and Harry sitting on the Hogwarts Express together for the first time. This is once they've already started sharing candy together that Harry generously bought enough for them to share. Harry is looking at his chocolate frog card, holding his chocolate frog. Ron has scabbers on his head. There's some birdie bots beans it looks like next to him on the chair. And the print on the seats behind them is flying pigs which I believe is the symbol for the Hogwarts Express, a flying pig. Maybe it was like, we're gonna start taking a train to Hogwarts. And somebody else was like, yeah, when pigs fly, they were like, perfect. Here is another very scary picture of Hogwarts Castle. And I don't know why it gotta be so scary considering this is like the first time Harry sees it, I'm pretty sure. But it's looking dark and scary and gothic and like we're in a scary movie right now or like a demon movie or something. But it still does look cool. I mean, I'd still wanna go to school there even though it does look kind of scary. Chapter seven, the sorting hat. And this is just like an outside view of like one of the walls or like the main front outside wall of Hogwarts or something. Maybe like when they're first entering the building. I gotta say, Jim K really puts a lot of hogs, a lot of pigs, a lot of pig heads. There is a lot of pig illustration throughout all of Hogwarts and the Hogwarts Express and all of it. And this hog on the front even has warts. Next is the scene when all of the first years are standing right inside the entrance hall and Professor McGonagall has left them alone for a few minutes. She's gonna come back and get them. But in the meantime, they see all of the Hogwarts ghosts I'm flying through the walls and they're all freaking out for a second but then they're like oh man it's the hogwarts ghost it's lit and the fat friar comes by and is like hope to see you in hufflepuff house gotta represent hufflepuff house clearly has the friendliest ghost the way that ghosts are depicted is pretty scary they're like kind of lighting up in a strange creepy iridescent type of way the one on the far left is clearly the scariest and i don't know who it's supposed to be, but it is just a skeleton with like a see-through dress kind of shape on, and it's got a scary umbrella thing. It may be Mary Poppins. I don't know who it's supposed to be, but it is definitely scary. Oh, there's a couple of them with these scary umbrella looking things. And we do see nearly headless Nick in this picture. Here's a close-up of the sorting hat on Harry's head. It is almost, you wouldn't notice that it's got a face. It sort of just looks like a regular old kind of dilapidated hat. Is that a normal word to use for that? I love like the patching and the fraying of the hat. It looks really old and tattered. Although it doesn't look as big as I think it's supposed to because I think it should fall over Harry's head. Here's our first look at Professor Quirrell. We didn't see him in the Leaky Cauldron for some reason. He looks very scared and he looks older than I expected and his turban looks looser than I think it ought to be. Can you please keep that Dark Lord in there? 
Here's another illustration of Nearly Headless Nick. This one makes it pretty obvious that he is nearly headless. And even it's like they got some fake ghost blood coming out or something. Okay, so this seems like a pretty good time to wrap it up for this video. I am about halfway through the book. I don't think I'm gonna try to get through this all in one video or it's gonna be like a really, really long video and no one's gonna watch the whole thing and that'd be pointless. But it seems like a good stopping point because Harry is just kind of got to Hogwarts, got through the school feast, and starting the next video, Harry will basically be in his first day of classes. So we will be starting off there the next time. And we will be finishing all of it. So anyways, guys, that's it. I hope that you liked it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on the next part. Plus, upcoming after that, I'll be doing books two, three, and four in a similar fashion. The fifth one isn't due to come out until at least fall of this year. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which was your favorite illustration. Do you like the Jim K version better or the Mina Lima version better? And thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in my next video. Oh my gosh, guys, I absolutely love this book so much. This is the first Harry Potter book that I got for myself as an adult or as a human being really at all. This is sort of like my first collection of Harry Potter is these Jim K illustrated books and I just love the illustrations in these so much and I've kind of destroyed the books a little bit along the way because I just wanted to look through them and read them so much but when I get them I just kind of like take them around with me everywhere and look through the pictures a lot and read them over and over so they're not even in like top condition anymore because I've already messed them up I know bad collector